All right. Well, hey, continuing on with Q&A, just because we had such good ones. Uh, Joe Bosnick, he says, Kevin, I've enjoyed what you've done with the Ziggler Show over the years, but I especially look forward to your True Life Show episodes. I was wondering if you and Dr. James would consider an episode on childhood food allergies or allergies in general. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know that I, one well. I, I know that one well. Yeah, people haven't heard. I mean, I think we've talked about it, but you've got uh, one kid, Sagan. How old is Sagan now? Nine? Nine. And his allergies are significant. Yeah, it, well, I, I can tell that story. So, so yeah, where do you want to start? I can go back into to me because that's kind of what led me, which then leads to you uh, enjoying finding your family, understanding functional yeah, medicine. So yeah. I, I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I was a young kid in the 70s. And there's no such thing as food allergies other than the very rare peanut allergy or something like that. I have no memory, like in my schooling and stuff, if anybody had a food allergy. I mean, oh, they probably did, but we didn't know about it and it wasn't a big deal, it seems like. Well, since you bring that up and we're famous for rabbit trails, if you go to a school now, uh, like next door, the typical elementary school, 30% of kids will have a diagnosis of something that is related to the environment. So asthma, inhaling 30%. allergies, food allergies, a sensitivity. Now we've got one in almost 60 boys that are getting autism. Is that related to food allergies? Yes. And that probably, and that probably doesn't include obesity. Does uh, it? That does not include obesity or, or other diag reasons for diagnoses, but skin stuff, atopic dermatitis or eczema that people would call. And you know, if your kids have these kind of things and so children, food allergies, and you know, you're looking for kind of puffy eyes, mouth breathing, snoring, eczema. If your kids have these kind of symptoms, then I, I would not just say, oh, that's my kid or, or whatever, that you pay attention to that. Bad breath, uh, large tonsils, um, rosy cheeks is, is another kind of, these are just famous clues, but those bright red, fiery, rosy cheeks that- I mean, this is like Norman Rockwell paintings. Right, that's yeah. like the cherubic, angels on the Sistine Chapel or something like you expect kids oh where's a cheap kid yeah right. what does he eat what is going on in his why is, it's more like why are his cheeks on flame wow and um I was that kid and we were just looking at some of your old pictures I've got an old picture of myself and I remember this in the it was before my dad was military so before we went to Germany I was in the second grade and, and the photographer said say monkey and you're supposed to say e with your and I said, monkey, and, and I just looked like a zombie. Puffy eyeballs, open mouth, dry, chapped, cracky lips. And of course, back then we had, there was no connection to, is something going on here? Went to Germany and that's where asthma started. So I did have inhaling allergies over there. And so all the time, my dad is the doc that is kind of a specialist in this area of congestion. And his, and his kids are wreck. You're a bad my, ad. I, I'm a bad dad, dad or he's a bad dad one of yeah, the two yeah. and um so in germany i got the the skin prick test and reacted to everything so hmm. thus began shots and yeah. i remember vividly i was telling so my youngest now is that age of what i was i had to walk from school to the hospital and this was in germany and the hospital was off base and it was a big long walk and so I had to be more mature than I than I was to go and get my shots and so fast forward but during those times you know mouth breathing and headaches tummy aches constipation was another one and that was just life but also what life was and we've talked about that I vividly remember I had to I was addicted to milk and cereal every morning like if it wasn't there my day was wrecked I can't remember why, like did I get a headache or a tummy ache or was I just having a bad attitude? I just remember, because we were cross-culturally living when we went out wow. to go skiing or something and we got the German breakfast, which is the little brochins of people have been there, the little bread pieces. And I was just, I was like, how can people eat this way? I was going to say, I would, I would never know. I never experienced that because I never had a time when I did not have those things. There was always <laughs> milk and <laughs> well, maybe that's why. And that's one of the advantages of living cross-culturally is you recognize some of those things. So I remember that. And of course, this is now filtering through my, you know, the decades of time. 
And uh, so I was the kid with food allergies. And if the, but there's no knowledge of that. And then in the 80s, uh, my dad did some specialty training. This was still in the military and, and uh, got into otolaryngic allergy or e, the ENT docs do their own allergy. And so I was his guinea pig. And one day I'm in high school and he came home and he said, you know what? Why don't you just stop doing milk? Well, I'd grown up with milk and cereal. You know, when you're little, it was Apple Jacks and Fruit Loops, Alphabets, Honey Jacks, eight essential vitamins, and, iron. and then we got healthy. So then it was Honey Nut Cheerios, Life cereal, and Life Grape Nuts, man, <laughs> <laughs> toasted something, cinnamon toasties, or yeah. Uh, so all that was just the daily fare, and of course at night, drink a glass of milk with your steak. It's because that's, it does that's a body healthy. good. It does a body good, and. I remember the four basic food groups in school and yeah. down at the bottom, you can find old pictures of them. You know, the copyright is the American Dairy Association. Uh -huh. And uh, they, they have not done a body good. They've they, done a, a culture very bad. Very badly. And so, so it changed my life when, uh, you know, and I was old enough at the time and interested in athletics and stuff. And, and so, oh. Well, then for the first time ever, I'm not breathing through my mouth, sleeping all night long, not waking up with a dry mouth. So, so it really, it made a big significant change in me. And so, well, and just real quick. I, so as a kid, I was on, I had shots. My dad gave them to me at you home. Did? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Dad gave them to me at home. I'd get a little army guy, I guess, if I didn't cry or something. I don't remember. I used to get little army men. Allergy shots? Allergy shots. Yeah. Uh huh. Huh. But it was, it was the perception at least was that it was seasonal stuff. Right, right. Inhale. That's what, mo that's what allergy shots are for. All right. I didn't, when I had shots back then, that was in I just wonder if it, you know, was that really, or was I, cause you know, I was eating all the foods and stuff as well, but. No, either, right? well, I think it goes in together. So for lay people, a good idea to think about is that we're all born with a, think of an empty cup, right? And every breath you take puts a little drop in that cup. And, and genetically, certainly somebody is gonna be very sensitive to say cats. And so along comes a cat and all of a sudden, every breath fills your cup up fast and in 10 seconds, you're overflowing through your eyes and your nose, right? It's just the itchy eyes, runny nose, uh, whatever your inhalant symptoms are. And some people are born genetically with a barrel, five gallon barrel, and they can, they can, you know, kiss the cat, rub their face in it, whatever else. It, eventually, I would argue, all people can get enough of a cat or dust or smoke or whatever to trigger a sneeze or, or something. But some people are born with a thimble and they cannot be in the same room with a cat. They can, you know, and, and, and other people have a five-gallon barrel. So that's genetically one of the things going on. And then how much water is going in? You know, are you rubbing your face in 10 cats all at once would be a, a fire hose going into the system or is it a cat in the room next door that barely one little hair yeah. wafts over every day and, and somebody might be sensitive to that so that's that's inhalant allergies food allergies you can think of the same way when it comes to the famous anaphylaxis to peanuts or shrimp or which i was going to say so you have a son is that i was saying where i started off with who is yeah, he's peanuts. peanuts yeah peanuts I mean, is his main thing anaphylactic so you guys go around with an epi pen and whatever i mean it's a it's a it's a full deal it and and now we're far enough away we, it, it it also evolves like but you can't test it you can't say oh <laughs> give some peanuts and get ready to go to the er if we have to well so this is a part of our discussion today so there i was with my, he was one or a little bit over one. And you know, remember the bumbos? Yeah. Those things you, it yeah. says don't sit them on the countertop and all parents sit them on the countertop sure. as you're making your peanut yeah. butter sandwich. And I had just read an article. So this is eight years ago. And for years and years, we taught in, you know, pediatrics, family practice, you know, don't give a kid nuts until later on, let them develop their immune system. And this article was saying, well, wait a minute, expose the system earlier, but not a lot. And so I'm literally reading, this is in the JAMA, so a Journal of American Medical Association. It's not a weird journal. It's a, it's a major one. And I'm reading this, <laughs> making a peanut butter sandwich in front of my kid, just sitting there. I take a spoonful, I shove it in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, with, without a second thought. And so finished making my sandwich. And, and in fact, we have family over 
Uh, and in about, you know, three or four minutes, I just glance over at him and his eyes are wide and his face is bright red, his whole face. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, uh, and he just, you know how kids, when they're excited about eating and they flap their, they flap their arms like that, he's flapping and like, I think he wants more, <laughs> but I'm, I'm waiting. And then he just up chucks. Oh. And, uh, so he got exposed one more time after that. And, and, and his response was, was the barfing. And so then we did. Uh, the blood work and the tests, and sure enough, he's he's got IgE. So allergically, it's 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 mediated by this acute anaphylactic pathway, yeah. and that's the famous food allergy of peanuts and those kind of things. And those people do so. Number one is avoidance, just like if you're allergic to cats, don't have a cat. And then if you get exposed to cats or or whatever, the guy who's the thimble has to get. Uh, the EpiPen, and, and that's what we carried around. For well, you, you mentioned like the, for yourself the prick test. What are I mean? There are some primary tests that you do use. Yeah. So tests. we also I don't know if you know this, but we used to in the office do the prick test. Uh huh. Yeah. It it's just cumbersome. Um, you have to do a control, so everybody gets a control of, of nothing, like you know, just saline. And if you react to that, then something's wrong with either the test or or whatever. And then uh, a histamine, so you should have a huge reaction to that. And then cat, dog, dust, mold, and whatever we're testing in, in certain panels. And these days we use the blood work, so we'll send it off to Quest or LabCorp. Or well, this is the same question: you know, Where can these? I mean, can they? Can people go to a traditional doc and request an allergy? You know, or can I, I, I know did he, that as family practice doc because I was interested in allergy. Yeah. And a lot of those guys don't. They'll just send you to an allergist. If you go to an allergist in America, most of them are still doing skin prick. I was just saying, but people can do that. Can't, can't they just, they don't, do they have to have a referral? You, can they you, just, you, oh, you don't need a referral to go to an allergist. So somebody can find a local allergist, mm -hmm. whatever, and go there and say, I want a food allergy test. Well, yeah. again, that's going to be the skin prick kind. So this is where the controversy, they do. They, this is where the controversy starts. So in America, your typical allergy specialist, now granted, I haven't sat down and had coffee with one of these guys, um, but in the military, I did. So on my local base, we would have allergy extenders. So me as the family practice doc on a small base, I went to a two-week course with the allergist at the medical center and, uh, and learned how to do the skin prick testing yeah. and get the shots going and all of that. So that is one methodology of looking for IgE mediated allergy and it's very effective. But what about IgG, IgM and IgA? These are the other sort of pathways that your immune system works on to create the response. Okay. So even in COVID-19, you know, if people go get a, uh, you know, the acute test is a swab, nasal pharyngeal swab, like it, like just like strep throat. But what if we wanted to see if you had, like right now, if we did an antibody test on strep throat on you, we would, it would be positive, but the positivity would be IgG or IgM. Those antibodies are what the immune system kind of learns and keeps around for the next time you have strep or the next time you have COVID or the next time, whatever. So, so for foods, we can test because the body will make IgG, IgM to foods or dairy, gluten, corn, soy, all the foods. And then it's, uh, and so the way I would talk about it with people is through the blood test, that this is squishy science, if that's fair, right? Like we can measure your red blood cells and get it very, very accurate, precise. The, the number is going to be the same between You're Quest saying blood and LabCorp. Is, blood is squishier than the, than the even, prick? Even the skin test is squishy because now you're, you're measuring your response by pulling out a ruler and saying, well, this one was three millimeters of a wheel on your arm. And this one was 10 millimeters and this one was eight and this one was whatever. That's not exacting science. That's, you know, a, a minimum wage technician just pulling out a ruler and writing down on a piece so of paper. So what's the last one you did with your kids? Was it blood? It was. <laughs> yeah. So. And that's what you did on me. And I don't remember the company you did. You, you had me do one. That's where we found. Yeah, things like green beans, which I thought that was a weird yeah. deal. Eggs was high, but green beans and lentils. Right. So, uh, I, and I think we used Genova for you. Right. And that's right. But what we were looking at there is IgG. So, within the last few days, and remember, we tell you eat your normal stuff. 
don't be dairy free the week before your test. Now, if somebody is out there and they know, okay, let's back up a step here. The gold standard of food allergy testing is don't eat the food. And if you feel better, you're allergic to the food. Yeah. So aside <laughs> from that, we figured out just by trial and error or uh, elimination diet. Right. That corn, that is corn. Still... Yeah. Corn bothers me, yeah. especially even more than regular corn is corn derivatives. Products. So maltodextrin, xanthan gum, you know, and all the variations of corn syrup, corn solids, corn meal, corn, blah, blah, right. blah, so blah, processed, corn. processed corn. Yeah. Uh, and uh, nightshades. Yeah. Uh, are, are I just they don't do my body good doesn't mean they're bad necessarily but for me I just for some you're, reason you're thimble I have, I have a, yeah, I have a, thimble. a little thimble. I have a thimble and so those things I pretty much don't do I'll do you know a little bit of salsa so actually I'll, sometimes I'll do you know half a cup or something like that and I'm kind of deal with I'm kind of wary of am I gonna mess me up but uh yeah. well and I'll do the same thing for you know the weekend movie night ice cream treat knowing I'll maybe be a little stuffy the next day. And to that degree, I mean, if you look at, name the top allergens. Uh, well, now, okay, food allergens? Yeah. Okay, because the inhalant allergens are going to be no. even more. No, yeah, let's stick with, uh, uh, yeah so, so I would say gluten is number one, dairy number two, corn number three, soy number four. So that, that's the four horsemen of the apocalypse, we call it. And, and it, it's probably good to point out there that it is the industrialization and the processing I think that has really messed things up over time. Yeah, like how would I be if I had an ear of corn from 300 years ago off the farm? The Indians. Probably, right. but we can't yeah. even get that anymore. It, it doesn't exist, yeah. right. But to that, you know, back when we talked about elimination diet, if you feel like, well, in this case, Joe, you know, there's, there's a food allergy. So take the, that I'd, list. I'd do those four. Or, or, but can he even do, I mean, because, you know, people, I, I'm not going to eat those foods for so long. Well, you can do one at a time, right? Say, okay, you can. Out but here's, so here's where it starts to get complex. Let's just stick with those four. Yeah. Some people are going to be fine with gluten alone or dairy alone, but you have gluten and dairy, wow. which is, you know, a grilled cheese. That's the combination that fills, the, fills your cup up faster. Why is that? And all those questions we don't know, right? So the yeah. science of that, we don't know. Now imagine with just four foods, you've got six, I can't do that math, 16 right. combination, potential yeah. combinations that you would have to then do the elimination of. Well, what if you do dairy, gluten, soy? Yeah, yeah. Now you've got whatever the multiple. Well, and, and I've told this story before, but I'll, and I'll make it super fast, uh, that one of the things yeah, that brought us together was uh, my wife had our, our last biological kiddo, at least, and his face is just mottled, getting worse every day. And he's on breast milk and, and uh, came to you and you said elimination diet, now, which to my thought process, and he, I hadn't even consciously really thought about it, but it was just thinking, man, he's getting breast milk. That's probably right. filtered. Anything she's taking I was going to say, you thought of your wife as a filter. Yeah, totally. And that he's <laughs> getting good breast milk. And you're saying, well, no, whatever she's taking is coming through that. And she had increased her dairy. I don't know what the well, reasoning. Uh, women are, are told, told to. to. Well, yeah. But she knows better about dairy. I, I don't know why she... I don't know. Anyways, uh, so she had done that. You said elimination diet, and we cut them all out. Uh, you know, even like soy and nuts and everything, cut it out. I think the idea was 90 days. I don't know how long we went. But anyways, then she came back in and tried to put something. I think the first thing she tried putting back in was dairy, and boom, right away, he gets mottled skin again. And we knew, so we took out dairy, and he was fine. And we've never let him have much dairy. Now he's 10 and he will sometimes here and there. We don't see some acute reaction, but I'm sure it's not helping him, but we just try to make it a treat. Right. And that's, so we're back to one of those themes that we've said all along that, you know, chocolate. Well, sugar, so, and so Joe, if you've got a kid, he's got a kid. I mean, there you go. I don't, there's, you know, you can go do, so you can go try to get a skin prick test. You can try to do a blood test that'll tell you that's great. Or you well, can food just, sensitivity, let's be clear, is not the skin prick test. That's, that's, that's not the skin prick test. So this food sensitivity, well, the test is elimination. It, it, unless yeah. you think it's peanuts, but well, you know, and, and he did, and he did say allergy. And we use that word a lot when in fact we are saying, no, not allergy, not a true allergy, but a sensitivity and intolerance or whatever. And then now we're into the squishy part. That's what I'm talking about. No, I, like, I'm with you. So better. So you're saying better than a test. If you're, because that's going to cover an allergy, not a sense, not an, that's a good point though. A test that uncovers an allergy, but it, it down here, it, the kid didn't get a skin prick. It didn't show bad for dairy. They may still be highly intolerant or sensitive to it. 
and it's just hard to find the right chemical to test in the body. So we're back to you're better off. The gold standard is elimination. Yeah. But then you asked, okay, so, and if we have to do each one, and I would say a minimum of, if you want to be real about it, three weeks, you see a lot of, you know, detox diets out there for 10 days or two weeks or something like that. But if you're going to be serious about it, because the, the, um, the immune complexes, so let's say it's dairy, and because for me and for your family, dairy, so I eat some dairy and that, that immunological response, the, the sequelae or the consequences can stay around in the body for days and days. And so uh, there's some people who theorize, well, 21 days is going to get rid of all of that and, you know, 97% of people. So when we're doing it in the office for somebody who really wants to be certain, we say do it for a month. Yeah. Right. But now if you've got, so four different foods to do one month each, that there's just too much time. That's, that's really hard to do. So we, if people want to do the elimination, then I would say we, you know, do the comprehensive elimination, which includes those four. The next four most famous ones that are going to tip people over would be eggs, uh, caffeine, alcohol, and nightshade plant family. So those would be, and, and, you know, those for a lot of people, uh, they say, oh, I can do that because my kid doesn't drink alcohol. And I'm like, well, think about eggs because that's in every baked product. Yeah. And uh, Nightshade Plant Family is potatoes. And, and, and I do want to just hit that aspect of, you know, we are seeing more and more allergies because we have more processed food. We have less whole foods. We have, you know, the soils messed up. And yeah. back to what we've talked about, I think, I think we've covered it in quite a few shows. The reality that, like you talked about, you had milk and cereal every day, or, you know, I had it every day. And that, when, you know, that was not, that's not natural. Foods were made to be cycled. You had this food during this time. You didn't during this time. And then on dairy, I would say my own soapbox too. It's not helping anyone. Uh, everybody would be best off with dairy to, to treat it like a treat not a staple. It's just, it's, it causes mucus. I think there's enough people have problems with it. It's, I'm not convinced that it ever does a body good. Uh, I, there goes I, my sponsorship I, by the American uh, Dairy. Council. The American Dairy. Yeah. I, I guess I, I hesitate to go to, to say a blanket statement about dairy. If by, you know, the good side of dairy, if this means a grass fed, grass finished dairy cow, that isn't being hormoned that that the the family like if you have a family that's raising their own cows and and you go out and you milk the cow and and then you use the cream and the butter and the you know and thinking in in the sort of the keto diet style of things that that source of fat and protein can do a body good so for the 0.001 percent of you out there <laughs> who have that option Knock yourself out and send us some. Send, <laughs> send me some, some really good extra sharp well, cheddar you, cheese. Did you know that we did the, the raw dairy here in Colorado for a uh, while? Uh -uh. So in Colorado, you can't sell it. So the way a farmer would do it is, is, is you buy a share of a cow. Oh. So you upfront, you know, 50 bucks or whatever. And I own. Yeah, because they can't sell unpasteurized, right? Uh, correct. So then I own a share of a cow, meaning I am allotted one gallon every other week or something like that. And then I had to drive to Peyton <laughs> way so, out there to pick the thing up. Well, now we just solved a lot of the problem with dairy because your, your amounts just went down to about a 10. No, you're going to have a very, you're going to have a thimble of that because each one's a dollar oh, it, a sip. Yeah, it was $10 a gallon. <laughs> by, by the time all of a sudden done, it was $10 a gallon. That's awesome. And when you're doing raw dairy, it, my wife and I heard you, you, you sip it and you're like, okay, this was inside a cow just like the other day not pasteurized, not homogenized, not whatever. I was not worried about, you know, brucellosis and those kind of things because I knew the farmer. Yeah. It tastes earthy. Uh -huh. It was the best. It tastes yeah. like dirt. Uh -huh. It tastes animally. <laughs> it's, it's like people just, who have fish and go, it tastes fishy. Well, it's a fish. It's a fish. It, it We're tastes. just used to having it fried over here. Now it tastes like nothing. It could be shoe, right. le it could be shoe leather, but we've seasoned it up. And yeah, I had it as a kid. I had it on the farm and right, literally they'd squirt it out of the thing and, you know, my uncle would say, here, have some. And you'd take the little sudsy sip and it was sweet and good, but it always felt a little weird. Earth, I, yeah. yeah. It doesn't seem as, it seems a little more benign. Microbes. Out of the it's like jug. I'm drinking microbes. Well, hey, I hope we did justice on this one. I, I want to get this next question. This is, this is interesting. Timothy driver. He says, I would like to know how to address 
a short temper. <laughs> I've struggled with this for a long time. And somebody right after replies, meditation. And I thought that's what I wanted to talk about because we're going to look at a short temper and think about what's the, the immediate go-to is, you know, go see a psychiatrist or something like that. You know, this is a mental thing. But I mean, if you made a list, I was actually going to do that. And I, I, just, I just didn't, I forgot about it. Make a list of, you know, a short temper. What, I'll, I'll put you on the spot. What are the things, you know, what's a, a short list of things that could go, I mean, you know, he could have a, a crappy life. I mean, you could come up with, you know, bad circumstances. He lives in the ghetto and has no food. And he has a, no wonder he's a short temper or, you know, all these circumstantial, substantial things that would lead up to the psychological aspect. But then as you know, how many people do you treat more from a physiological standpoint? And lo and behold, it takes care of this behavioral problem or mental mm -hmm. problem. I mean, so there's so many. So is it, is it meditation or is the dude having, if he took away dairy and felt better, he'd have a better temper? Or yeah. Well, so the answer is yes. And the word I'd put in there is irritability. So that's, that's the word that I hear is, gosh, I'm just more irritable. I know it. My wife says it. My husband says it. Uh, let's bring in women and the PMS kind of aspect of this. Like, like there's a good physiologic example of where my mood went if it's related to hormones. Um, so irritability, I'm, I'm not myself. I'm just, I'm, I'm quick tempered. Um, underneath that, am I depressed? Am I anxious? Am I sad? Um, or am I underslept? Am I stressed out? All of those kind of things are going on. But of course, if you take that to the doctor and, and you've got, you know, the average of seven or eight minutes to kind of get your story out, have the doctor think about it and, you know, do all, uh, speaking of milk, we milk you for all the right kind of codes right. Of, to, to get paid to the insurance system. At the end, it's like, well, what would you like to do? Would you like to go to counseling? And a busy person, like would, if I asked you, you know, would you ever like to go to counseling? Would I like to? No. Would you like to? No, no. I did that. No. Okay. Well, here's a, Just here's a medication. A yes. yes. It's going to take a couple of seconds a day. It costs pennies and your insurance is going to cover it. Uh, okay. I'll try that. Cause and and then, then generally in the American populace, the only thing you care about is will there be a detrimental side effect? If not, man, I'm good. Give me uh, the drug. Yeah. Give me the drug because I don't want to go to the root cause to change my meditation or my stress or my, my, my sleep or my yeah. whatever. Well, and, and to that on the um, uh, uh, side effects, I mean, can we say, is it fair for me to, to say there's, there's no drug without some side effect. Maybe it's not acute, but it's, can it really it's, be totally benign? It's only going to address the problem issue and not bother anything else. I mean, it's no. still a processed chemical no, it's, thing I'm putting in my yeah. body. It, it, it is never. So here's the way I would kind of, cause what we're looking for is how can you hear this next statement and hold it in your head food and, and, and supplements I would put in that category are synergistically building in the body. Now, granted, when you eat a food, you, you get a piece of dust and a piece of mold and a piece of whatever. Your body has to process that out, right? right? So there's waste. All medicines, by definition, are blocking. Okay, there's, very, there's some that actually do something, but most of what medicines do, now we're in the 95th percentile of that, is they block. It's a, like, they're... Yeah, I'm sitting inhibitors. here thinking, so if I'm sitting here and, and inside I'm hitting you in the shoulder and you get this drug and it puts a piece of leather here and dulls the hit, you're still getting hit, man. Your body's still yeah. misfiring. Your, your body there, still has to process what And there's it's where doing. we live, that our body's still misfiring. We're now blocking it, that we feel better. But that there's got to be a manifest, a negative Well, and that, that leather that you just put over whatever the, yeah. the pain is, isn't leather in that spot. It's, it's leather in my br oh. well, it's the whole body. Okay. So now when I want to feel something over here, I can't. That is it, always it, weird to me, man. I've got, you know, I, I bash my shoulder. I'm going to take ibuprofen. It's not going to just know to, <laughs> to hey, go everybody to go shoulder. to the shoulder. Yeah. It's just going to say, we're going to go numb everything. That's yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's just kind of scary. Well, right. So that's where I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's a time and a place for medicines. They save people's lives. But is, is Timothy here? Is he suffering from a deficiency of Zoloft or whatever antidepressant? 
and that's that's or anti-anxiety right so that's and by the way they're the kind of the same medicine class and he might take that and say oh yeah it just smooths me out totally calms me down but many people will say okay now i'm too calm i'm too smooth i'm blunted i'm i'm obtuse i can't laugh cry smile at you know the 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 commercial or or whatever uh had a had a person who is actually you know when you use this for children it's even harder and the parent of of this child said yeah he hasn't laughed in a year and i thought wow that's that's remarkable so so it and and at the same time i'm even gonna put you on the spot and say okay kevin miller how often do you meditate that's so mean (laughs) I know. It, it, no, so I know. I'm, I, I'm, not, I, it, I'm not giving. But you know you would be better off. I would be better off. Is it fair to, and I'm a, a, I was going to say hit it from a layman's side, which is the only way that I can. So that's, a, <laughs> that's, only, that's the only certification I have. I'm a certified layman. Um, is to say, there, is it viable to say that there's a high propensity, there's some depletion, there's some, or, or, or overload, depletion or overload um, that, Timothy, if we get that and find, I have a short temper, I have a short fuse. And you said, you know, where are you irritated? Something is doing that. And is it physiological, circumstantial, psychological? This, yeah. I mean, there, you know, this which, is where it gets hard because, and very, very squishy. And if they, oh, here, so let me pull one out though. For me, you want to give me a short temper. If I eat those foods that we just talked about in sure. the allergy section, if I eat those foods, um, even if I feel like I can withstand it during the day, maybe I'm doing a lot, you know, I'm exercising and I'm positive and I got, you know, good relationships and hope and I can kind of withstand it there. But those foods, what happens to me, and this is the biggest fear that keeps me from doing it is it wrecks my sleep. And if my sleep is wrecked, I have a short temper. I have depression. I have despair. I just go, I just go south. I'm scared of that enough to keep me for the most part from eating those foods. And so is that drug going to help if I'm eating the food that causes me to sleep bad and the lack of sleep is what's, I mean, probably not. I mean, we're trying to find, you know, this is functional medicine. What is the root cause? And so for Timothy, yeah, is it a, uh, well, a, nag, the, a nagging wife, a bad job, a lack of sleep because food's causing it or a lack of sleep because of anxiety because of those other things? And the drug might help. Okay. Right? It, 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 and it also might hurt. It might help, but it is masking a... It's dealing Under, with the underlying. That, it is not right. getting to the root. So, that's right. But I, but I want he, Timothy to hear. I love this question because, man, there's a lot of options out there. But if he goes to traditional medicine, he's probably going to get one solution. Right. Right. Because even just as you say that, <clears throat> excuse me, as you say that, right. And I, I consider that my job is to help yeah. Timothy think through, okay. You're the detective. That's what right. traditional medicine We're, talks about. Where's the highest likelihood you, you've got an option in front of you of, okay, get him another hour of sleep for the next month. Okay, take your wife out on more dates. Okay, uh, find a new job, right? Like uh, to find the underlying source of the irritability and also the meditation, mm-hmm. the exercise, those kinds of things, and the lab. So we're going to go. And if we actually look for, like with you and said, holy smokes, you know, you've got the red foods that that popped up red on the scale here is that irritating your brain well how could we think that it wouldn't be yeah because those foods are going to go everywhere too and that that sense of inflammatory whatever that some person's going to perceive as anxiety or depression and somebody else perceives as a headache and he perceives as irritability that triggering biochemical reality has its roots and i would say for chronic issues like this don't hope that there's one thing like nightshades or sleep it's mostly nightshades and sleep and your relationship with your wife and a a job environment all of those things but that's overwhelming to think about people have to say okay well just give me like you well, and asking about the pillars. Okay, gonna, well, give me the, the number one main thing. Well, and, and with the patient, you are going to do that. You're going to look at those. That is it could be this. My, you, you, I can hear you say, my, the, my guess is right. primary culprit may be when, this. Let's try this. And I would ask anybody, when was the last time your doctor ever said my guess? Right? So we are trained to act like we know. You, yeah, it, is, it, is, it is acting school founded on the principles of science, this, that, and the other, and say, well, your serotonin's off and it sounds all smart Which and good. Which is why we pick on doctors as being pedantic because they have to be the- <laughs> They're taught to be. 
smart and everything. And, and, and actually, that's not blame only the doctors. That's what the patients want. True. You, you don't really want to hope maybe, yeah. that if, okay, if I just take this pill, I'm going to be all better. That's a, that's, that's a nice I, life I if want, you could do that. I, I want to, on one of those, I want to hit one thing that I, I'm just, I, it's so interesting to me, like with Timothy, and I had a friend bring it out, and I've heard it in different aspects, but Aaron McHugh, you remember yeah. Aaron, and he talked, it was kind of a, a, a stick for him for a while about emotional calories, that we have so many emotional, and we just think, we don't think about that. We don't think about, hey, I have a cup, today I wake up, I have a cup, whatever big, a bucket, whatever, emotional calories. I am going to spend them or not. So I'm going to use me as an example. Uh, my emotional calories, when I get up, have my quiet time in the morning, direct my day, center myself, I come into the office. I spend the majority of the day in this office writing and creating uninterrupted. I go on a bike ride during that. We sit out on the deck and have lunch and talk about life. Um, and I put out a lot of energy and effort during the day, but man, it's all in my wheelhouse. I didn't really use up a lot of emotional calories, man. I'm at peace and I'm good. I get home. I have plenty of temper left for my family. I'm good. Now put me in a, uh, where I got to go drive down the pass, which I hate, you know, just mm -hmm. having to mess with it. And I'm driving in traffic and all the people driving slow in the left lane. And, uh, and then I go into the parking garage and it's noisy and honking. And I go into, you gotta uh, pay 10 bucks. I got to pay 10. <laughs> and then I go into cubicle farm. And I'm working all day amongst people who are stopping by and chit chatting and meetings and all the things that wear me out. And I'm trying to be outgoing and charismatic and I can do it, but man, I have spent my, so by the time I get home, I got nothing. I, I've spent my emotional calories in, in that sense. I, I will have a short temper. I probably have it through the day and I'll try to hold on to it. And I'm looking for a glass of wine quick, if not another, you know, bigger drug. And I have a short temper. That's one we don't look at culturally. And I say, my gosh, well, you're, you're, you have yourself in a, a, an ill-fitting environment. Yeah. And the same thing could be you know, at home if you have a, a difficult relationship with a spouse, significant other, kids, or whatever. And it is draining. You just look that drain. I like that. Where are you being drained? So I have gotten more and more. I think we both have more and more in tune with the things day to day that drain us or not. I used to go through a time of if I had a big show in an interview – it would drain me. Yeah. I, today I've done so many of them. It's not as draining, but on those days, I, you know, I come home and T Terry would start talking about something. Like, Honey, I'm, I, I, I'm just, I'm a little drained. Um, can we not do that tonight? And okay. And that's good to know that I, I did this, you know, for you to have gone through, uh, we used to do that with you with new patients and not more than I, one yeah, new I, patient. I asked that. not to have, because it is draining. Yeah. It's, it's, it's now one of the things that you said, You've done it so often now that it doesn't drain you as much. Okay. So I want to key in on that. That's training. Yeah. That's meditation. You have meditated and thought and prepared so often for these interviews that your muscles really strong. And so when you go and do it, just like a bike ride, if somebody else did your bike ride, they would be really drained. Yeah. But you're not. And in the same way, so this is where I think I, I, it's the bothness of, so uh, Aaron talked about emotional uh, calorie, emotional, emotional level. Emotional calories. Okay. Well, you can also build that up. That is, now we're back to what we talked about before in the brain and the, the furrows and the rivets that you have the way your brain thinks. Yeah. Habit. You can unhabit this area and habit this area. You can build up your emotional calories by getting your exercise, getting your sleep, getting good nutrition. And we're always going to say that. And by putting yourself in the right environment and that kind of thing, that's what I would call on the, the, the epigenetic influences that are going into your mindfulness, your emotion, your psychology, and also the chemistry of your psychology right? In terms of, of drinking your water and that kind of thing. And, and uh, you're building it up both on both, both sides. And think how marvelous that is. Think how complex that is. And think how different that is from going to the doctor and getting a pill or even going to the psychiatrist and getting a talking to. Yeah. Well, and talk about, I mean, so many variations of how to address that. I mean, you can get used to, to, to too little sleep, but you don't want to get used well, that, to that. Well, that now we're in uh, what you you, you, I, you can endure. Endure. Yeah. That, that's not building up emotional calories. Okay. 
that's just because uh, for me, could I get better at going down the pass to a cubicle? Yeah. That, could I get, yeah, yeah but ultimately, ultimately it's going to drain. But, but I would be better off you right. to find a more fitting go. environment. So go. back to Timothy, you know, to think, man, where are you being drained? And I bet if you, you met with you for an hour and you talked about this, you would find, holy smokes, you would audit these things and find some primary drain oh, yeah. going, oh my gosh. And we've, I think we've said it on the show where like the one family that I think about all the time, and it was one of these classic cases of a, you know, 50 year old parents mm. with a 25 or 30 year old son. And I'm like, kick him out. Well, of the but it was house. a toxic relationship. And so, yeah, right? toxic. And you just didn't, I remember that because well. <laughs> she wasn't, she wasn't in, she was not in good health. And yet you said with all of this going on, the best thing for you right now, are you, I think you finally got, got to a point of going, I can't help you because uh, none of this is going to take root or get much traction while you have this toxic like, relationship yeah. that you're dealing with every single day, which yeah. you've done that with people saying, man, the thing you need to do most is go deal with your marriage. Yeah. Because all this, all the, I, I would say it this way, all the supplements that you're taking are falling out of the hole of your marriage. That's a great, that's a great, that's all a great the, perspective of all the things leaks out of your marriage or that, you know, where are you leaking? But that's, out? that's this show right here is people yeah. listening, people who are doing so many of the right things and not getting the results they want. I love that. We need to come up with a, 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 a slogan or something like that. It, but it's falling out through the hole of something that we are not perceiving. That's what we're here for. We're all doing that. Where are we, where are the holes uh, that things are falling out? Cause nobody's listening to this. Who's not doing a lot of good things. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> next uh, I think we're getting ready to interview uh, Dr. Bredesen. He uses, now he uses holes in the roof. He, because he's talking about your brain and it's like all your thoughts are floating away and they won't stick. They won't trap because you've got holes in your roof. Yeah. I have always used, you got holes in your boat. And, and a lot of people out there, like we say, they, they've got a, a finger in the dike here and here and here, and I'm working on that. And I'm, I'm spending all this time and money and effort on organic food or whatever, but all of us have a hole and we can only sustain life for about 85, 90 years. But the more effective and efficiently that you can see the holes that are going on, where... And, and I think things like emotional calories, that floats under the water line, like Steve Smith always said. It's like, what in your subconscious or unconscious? And this is where I would say you need a doctor like me. And sometimes I would say, just listen to your wife. She's telling you that <laughs> you're just a jerk or whatever. Maybe you are. None of the guys here you want that. They <laughs> yes, have no, a no, pill. no, no, no. I want a pill. pill. <laughs> <laughs> to make my wife think differently. <laughs> Can you give my wife a pill? <laughs> That's, oh yeah so there's a whole, there's that would, a whole that, you would make a million dollars come to me and i'll figure out the drug that your spouse needs. <laughs> your spouse needs. That's right. <laughs> your kids. you don't have to change it all no here's one for your boss <laughs> just put it in their coffee okay, uh, you, yeah. i don't know if you want to jump there but you mentioned epigenetics which i couldn't even tell you what the heck that means but because we have somebody who asked can i jump to that yeah, yeah jennifer archman she said i would love to know about epigenetics specifically rewriting my diabetes genes and metabolism i really want to live past age 50. I'm doing wow. better than my family members did. I'm several years, years older than they were when they had their first heart attack, stroke, and cancer surgeries. Wow. I'd like to add more years to that. Um, I, I don't know her really close personally, but I know of Jennifer through uh, business channels, and she does work that she gets a lot out of. I mean, so she's got a lot of fulfillment. I mean, this is not somebody so she's sitting filling on the up that boat. She, yeah. yeah, she, but, but she's still looking at, at obviously, well, there, I'll leave the quick you direct. Yeah, I, I, I I love that. In fact, as we are trying to do our own, you know, what's our lead flow channels on the business side or something, I'd say uh, that kind of sentiment, that feeling is, 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 a, is a perfect patient. Like I'm willing to work, working hard, doing these things already, but gosh, my family history is this. I want to rewrite my genes. So the famous phrase about genetics and epigenetics, you know, do you remember this is your genes loads the gun, your lifestyle pulls the trigger. So we, you are born with a set of genes, and, but and they give, you, they give you a propensity. They give you a propensity. So you have you you have them from your folks and ancestors. I do, and yeah. But but I don't like right now. We're two white guys, right? So you have a propensity to get a sunburn. Yeah. So I use this instead of diabetes and those kind of things because it's so obvious. So compared to 
my Indian friend in, in high school who, and I asked him one day, we, we played tennis together. And I'm like, here's some sunscreen. He said, well, he had never had it on his body his whole life. He's <laughs> like, what? I'm like, oh, okay. Well, there's, there's the point. Lifestyle, my lifestyle was wear a hat, don't get, don't get sunburned, all this kind of stuff, put on sunscreen. His lifestyle was, yeah, take your shirt off, whatever. I don't even think about it. And that, that's the genetic whatever. But it, as, a, as a white guy, if I look at you, what would you think if I said, oh my gosh, yeah, you are pre-sunburn. Hmm. And you are. But you know, if you live smartly, it doesn't mean you're going to go out there and get a sunburn. But do you have to think about that? Yes. So, and then you think about a hat or clothes or whatever else. Okay, what about diabetes? Every human out there can get diabetes. Well, as you say, and I comment on this with everything now, is we're all on the spectrum. We are all has on diabetes. the spectrum of everything. There's nobody yes. who has zero diabetes. I mean, that's, that's right. So okay, or you know, go to the chemistry. There's nobody out there who has zero glucose okay. or has a, an A1C of zero, right? If you don't have enough glucose, you'll die. Okay, well, how much glucose and in what form is going to tip her over into a glucose of 125, a fasting glucose of 125, and then the doctor says, click, that's diabetes, or an A1C of 6.5, click, yesterday was 6.4, you're still only pre-diabetic, and now you've got diabetes. So that line, we're all on the spectrum. There is no physiologic black and white line. So that really makes me frustrated when people come in and say, oh, yeah, do that test on me for diabetes. It's like, well, where are you on the spectrum? That's what we want to know. Yeah. Because if you are pre-diabetic, don't you want to get less pre-diabetic? Because you are pre-diabetic, just like you're pre-sunburn. Well, don't wait for a sunburn and then put on sunscreen. But are you going to prescribe much of any of a different lifestyle, diet, whatever, to anybody, regardless of where they are on the spectrum? You're still sure. going to. Like really? to her, Yeah. Family history is important. And she says, oh, yeah, both parents were clear, okay. full-on diabetes, because that's her epigenetics. Okay. So well, that's her genetics, right? That's what she's got. But now the epigenetics basically means what is the soup you live in? What is the context of your life? How much glucose and in what form I was is going gonna, in? Okay, I was going to say, because you say, so your genetics loads the gun, your lifestyle pulls the trigger. Can I change the loaded gun? Well, can you become a black guy? No. Okay. That's so, what I'm asking. So okay, can, you really so let's go into can you really rewrite your genetics? Okay. Or you just address it? To, environment? Because my thought was, I actually wrote this down right after she said that. I said, no, you just rewrite your environment. A little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. So on one hand, you cannot become a black guy. Right. Try as you might. Uh, you still are going to have to think about sunscreen and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the way I would think about it as we look at the computer here, here's the example. And I do want people to get this. Um, your genetics, 30% of it is hardwired. Male, female, black, white, blue eyes, brown eyes, long hair, short hair. Diabetic propensity uh, or diabetes. Uh, no, 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 no. That, no. So 30% okay. is hardwired. Okay. okay. We could say that if you use the word propensity or probability, there's a hardwiredness, but now we're getting unhardwired, right? That's the... That, that's what that word means. It's not black and white hardwired. So it, some of it is black and white. You are not on the spectrum of male, female, right? That, or black, that, white. Isn't that arguable these days? Well, yeah, okay, let's not go there. You're not on the spectrum of having 10 toes or 11 toes. Okay. It's, it's a black and white genetically driven thing. Okay. 70% okay. of your genetics, though, is soft wired. If you eat this way, then the propensity kicks in and you start to be becoming diabetic or uh, sunburned or fatty liver or atherosclerotic or hypertensive or whatever. You're not going to be becoming more yeah. female or be, be, be growing an 11th toe. That's not possible. But you can be becoming epigenetically, you are putting your genes in the environment that is becoming over here this way. So if I said, Kannst du mich verstehen auf Deutsch? You would say, uh, I'll take right. fries with But that. I use the exact same alphabet that you are speaking every day. Yeah. So if we look at the computer, the computer is hardwired, but with that computer, I can type German. I can't do it very well, but if I practiced it, I would be becoming more fluent in German with the exact same machine. But I can't take that machine and turn it into a Frisbee. It's not 
hardwired to do that at all. So if okay. people will hold that, 30% is hardwired. And 70% is a complex series of, if you remember back to basic coding and computer science, you know, of if then statements, if this, then that. But what if you said, well, if my marriage is, we said it already a hundred times. If I got a good sleep, if my marriage is going well, if I love my job, if I don't have to drive down the past, then I've got a good attitude. If I woke up and my kids didn't, you know, get up on time and I was late to take them to school and they pestered me and this and that and that, I have a short temper. So now he, uh, Tim, might be born predisposed to a short temper and all of that hardwiredness. And it would be an unwise person to say, oh, God made me this way, so just deal with it, right? Or can my you even say partner, that predisposed to a short temper or he's predisposed to a small cup in this area in, of his life? Yeah, like but it's now it's infinite, really yes. Yeah. And that's where I would tell somebody who says, oh, I'm just short tempered, I'd say, don't live that way. Yeah. You're, that's that's where I get so, I have such a hard time with labels. Um, yeah, but we, you, you do, but if I said, Kevin, are you a white guy? I, I don't, <laughs> that's, that's I don't think kind of, of that as a negative name. Okay, label, are you a nudist? Well, not most of the time. <laughs> Depends what resort I'm at, man. That's right. So we label all the time. This is a table. Okay, negative. That's a chair. Okay, the negative labels. Negative labels because I, I, we tend to lean into them. I don't like them. For, for that as reason. an excuse. That's, well, that's yeah. the crutch. Or, or propensity. But, but let me go back. To, I'm, I'm a little enamored with the loaded gun. So if 30%, you're saying I come out and 30%, or my kid you know, has a loaded, is, uh, yeah. is, is, already, is already preloaded, hard, hardwired. And then things happen. I'm going back to my own issue with, uh, with nightshades that I assume is I did some extra hardwiring, negative hardwiring with bike wrecks and stuff. I had a lot of you know, pretty significant injuries and stuff. So that unique to me, when I take that nightshade in, my body doesn't like it. Maybe your body's fine with it. My body has a sensitivity to it. It causes inflammation, I'm assuming. And it does so in a place that I, I this is just my conjecture over you know, experiential and, and, and stuff that it caused inflammation in a place that probably coincides maybe with an injury and it puts my back out like the mm -hmm. kind where you can't breathe and whatever. Cause somebody else, one is, has no problem with nightshades Two, maybe it does have a problem. It causes inflammation, but it just is a little irritability or whatever. And then put their back out. You know, mine is, so I've got different hardwiring through, you know, so I was born and then boom, we do these things. We have these things that, that do extra hardwiring, increase our propensities and yeah, coming out of it though, can I change? I mean, can I go get a back sure, surgery sure. or go I get a I think I know where you're going. Well, uh, yeah. because the, the, and I, I'm going to agree with you. When people say I have high blood pressure, depression, anxiety, uh, a heart attack, and they say, well, my dad had a heart attack at 50. How much of your ailments, Kevin Miller, how much of your nightshade sensitivity and it throws your back out is related to your predestined genetics yeah. versus the lifestyle. And I'm yeah. going to answer you 5%. That I think you're more likely to have turned on your sensitivity to uh, nightshades because you abused them. I, I agree. That's and, exactly what we do with milk and gluten. And, go, and then the other one that bothers me it, that goes kind of into my little rant on labels right there is would you say that even with the most positivity that she is that Jennifer's trying to partake in the reality that she knows she has come from that I'm doing better than my family members did I'm several years, years older than when they had their first heart attack strokes and cancer surgeries there is a, a, a wiring right there of an expectation or a possibility sure. that is leading her that is possibly leading her down that I don't have I have no thought towards that at all. I have no thought of, I should, you know, that I'm dealing with family propensities and I have no negative expectations. So even if she's, I mean, just the fact that that exists is another uh, low, another, another bullet in the chamber of her loaded, of her loaded gun. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. So even you, if she knows you, better, she you, can't this, not. Well, this is where I would go to Jennifer, Jennifer. and say, you are not your family. But, but she's she can, influenced by it. That's right. Now she can try to think that we're back to day upon day, layer upon layer, be becoming more confident in the fact that you are not your mom. Yeah. And, but she still has that in her background and, and it's that underneath the waterline. And maybe that impacts her more than it does somebody else. 
and you and I both don't have really big family histories of stuff. So that's not in our consciousness. And I'm grateful for that. Um, but the, no, it's interesting though. I, uh, you say in that, um, I don't, my grandfather had, uh, melanoma really bad on his nose where they had to take it away and uh, then he ultimately did die of uh of, of cancer i don't know if i had to, i don't even know if i had to well, do see, and that, that probably impacted you last week it did I, that, was, that was my point but what was the thing that did it to him he's a farmer and he's out in the sun and dude didn't use sunscreen i imagine he just you know was too much sun exposure and i'm thinking i was a cyclist at how many hundreds of thousands of miles that i uh, put out there. And this was back, I started racing in, uh, on the road in 88, 87. This is before they even had helmets uh, required in races. You know, the, you were watching the Tour de France, dudes don't have helmets. That was, that was later. So they at some point had us, they made us wear helmets in races, but we just, you didn't wear a helmet out training. So I was doing most of those miles out there with no training. And you got that spot in your scalp. That's what I went and had checked yeah. out. And it was what do they call like it? Keratosis. Yeah, whatever. It wasn't cancer, but yeah. they froze it and, and whatever. I'm thinking that's a lifestyle thing, you know? So mm -hmm. if you're a farmer, your propensity and your dad's a farmer and you farm, what's well, not a genetic thing. That's it's right. A, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and that's where, so we talk about that all the time of trying to help people step out of the, oh my gosh, I'm trapped by my genes. Mm -hmm. I would say, well, no, you're not. You, you, uh, if you say, if, if Kevin Miller woke up one day and says, I feel like I'm a, you know, 65 year old black male we'd say well you know you are trapped by your genes because you're not yeah. right but if you said i'm a farmer or a biker well wear a hat or just go get cancer i mean it's just it's a free country kind of a thing and so to jennifer i'd say yes you have the propensity and to her rather than saying wearing a hat i'd say you need to get that a1c under 5.2 you need to get that fasting glucose down under 90. These, you know, these are $10 worth of labs that you can go out and do. Yeah. That's going to be her markers. You need to get your belly fat, your body weight down. And that's going to be more on the hormonal side. You need to learn how to fast. You need to understand and saying those words. And, and, and I don't know, Jennifer, but she might say, oh, yes, I, nobody's going to say, thank you. I love doing all of that stuff. Any more than you said, oh, pff, hat. I don't need to wear a hat. Why? Can you believe they're making us wear a hat? What stupidity! It, same thing how we said about seatbelts. How belts. unfair it is! I don't eat French. I love French fries and, and, and ketchup and well, those are ice night, cream. Those are nightshades. And, <laughs> it's a yeah. potato and a tomato. Well, me that, and dairy. And oh, by the way, let's just put that out there. Food sent to the first guy, and and most people will either love to the addiction point or hate the food that they're From, sensitive to. Yes. So me and dairy, like I say, I was wow. just out of sorts. If I did not get milk and cereal in the morning, Yeah. it, I, I felt wrong. That's exactly what an alcoholic would say. Cocaine addict would say, or the rest of our culture, the acceptable drugs, coffee. It's not, I need my coffee to not have a headache. It's that you just don't feel right when you get this thing that's poisoning you to the point of a headache. It's 8.51. I've had no coffee. I can, I can tell. hardly speak. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, uh, uh, you talking about that, uh, I like the term, I don't know if it's a fair one to use, but of affirmative action, that we all have to do that with ourselves. So Jennifer's going to have to do things that I don't have to do. That's right. Just like when, when I go out with my nine kids uh, up to the lake, I have one. Now we use sunscreen on all of them. I have one where it's affirmative action, man. If we have, if we have one ounce, he's getting it because I don't know what happened. I think Terry's been faithful to me, but that dude is an Irishman with fair <laughs> skin and fair hair and stands out like a sore thumb and uh, with this fine, fair skin. And, and, and needs apply it to you. A year ago, did you put sunscreen on your crown? No, but will you now? Absolutely. Or wear a hat. I, yeah, I, 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 I buy hats now, or yeah. you know, I have hats when I'm outside and something like that. Or if for some reason so I don't, yeah, we'll put a drop. That's. When we were at that simplistic. wedding last week. Yeah. Uh, I did you feel it? Oh my! I forgot we had no sunscreen. Terry did. She sat beside me. I don't know if you I noticed saw that. With her, I was like, "Why is her?" <laughs> she had her hand. It was like a on your head. It was like a yarmulke. <laughs> Yeah. Thought, wow, that is some some strange PDA. That's why, is what I thought. That's why, because I had had it frozen. <laughs> okay. That spot frozen the day before, so I thought that's not so only funny. is it is it exposed, but now it's probably even more uh, no, sensitive. I, yeah, I, there you go. That's okay. So let's just boil it down, and I'm going to use Jennifer and you, because when we talk about you, that's a mechanical 
$5 hat. You put it on. It's yeah. really easy. But if I go to Jennifer and with the same words, I say, well, it's just mechanical, quit eating sugar and fast. Super easy yeah. of, to understand and say the words, but to live that way compared to just wear a hat is so dramatically different in our culture and it's perceived as different. I, you know, I don't know what Jennifer is thinking right now saying, oh my gosh, the, the steepness of that road in front of her versus you to just wear a hat. Yeah. is really and that's where i would say as a doc as a coach to people this is the affirmative action you yeah. must uh, affirm the truth and take action well like like with jay daria we talked about her my youngest she's she's adopted she had talk about a loaded gun for diabetes yeah, yeah. um she's that's a, na yeah, native her. american so it, it talk about affirmative action we treat sugar like people would treat treat alcohol for an alcoholic uh, so I had a brother, he's been clean for a long time, but he about killed himself with alcoholism. And so and you go to family gatherings back then and man, we're just it's not going to bring not, it. Yeah. Actually, I just went to another a social gathering last week and that group, we, they never have alcohol because one lady has, has, has really struggled with it. Uh, so that's a, what we do with sugar with my youngest. We, man, we do not keep it. We changed Easter, you know, the Easter egg hunt and it went to uh, nuts. Uh -huh. you know, from what it used to be, which is great for everybody. Hunt. Kids weren't thrilled about it. She doesn't care, man. She's just happy to get food. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's a stark. That, that's, that's the change, change of yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. Okay. That is epigenetics. So now for your daughter, she's going to every day, day in and day out. Cause we also talked about, my gosh, it's been years. Why, how long is this going to happen? And I would, if, if, she, well, if you said forever, to I, some that's, degree, that's, to some that's, degree. To, that's hardwired. But we would, but we would hope that in, in a decade of very little sugar, processed sugar, whatever, and helping her, that she gets to a point when and it's a decade, she'll be what eighteen, that she could handle it better. Process. We would hope. Well, hang on. Okay. Would you say that to your brother? No, you wouldn't. Uh -uh. And some people, but in the alcoholic setting, you never say, "Hey, be really strict," and so that a year from now or ten years from now, you're one drink away. Now, some people can do it, but that is not the approach you take. So I, I would She's not. She's going to be better off to live yes. knowing that she has a loaded gun and that's going to be. Well, let me ask you, are you, all the protection you're taking when you take a trip to the beak next week, are you going to leave your hat, leave your sunscreen because you've done all this work for 10 years? Never. At this point. Never. Yeah. Well, I would look at Jen and say that, that what, that's your culture speaking. But you know that that's what we hope for. And I think. I, I know that's what our culture hopes for. Is that for, I'm going to be is, good and I'm going to get, I'm going to get, so I'm going to do well so that I can go back to go back to can, McDonald's and yeah. go back. Now the, the, the difference between alcohol and carbohydrates is you will die without carbohydrates and you don't have to have alcohol. It's the smoking situation. If we go I, into, I, I, foods, I, you know, I do want people to hear though, cause they're going to say, Oh, well, alcohol, that's more, you know, uh, addictive. I would say, I don't believe I so, know, man. Sugars. I think, yeah, I, I, we, you and I would both say it's number one. Yeah, I, I, I would too. It, it is, it's a mystery. It's one of those God uh, questions. Uh, matter of fact, and gosh, this is dangerous to say because alcohol does have some some harsh realities attached to it of addiction and, and downfall, whatever. But I know I do know a lot of people who have gone to a glass or even two of dry red wine at night to keep them from imbibing in the, you know. M&Ms and ice cream well, and, and, and whatever. the opposite is true. A lot of alcoholics turn to M&Ms. That's true. I mean, that, that's a famous, you know, they, they stop alcohol and they gain 50 pounds because they, they, they are addicted to the hand mouth. The I, was gonna, I was still going to say, I think as a culture, we better off to have a glass of wine at night than what most people eat. The chips, the processed well, stuff. Well, yeah, whatever. but now we're into, uh, you know, what, whatever the poison is and the thimble. Yeah. You, you know, it's, if we stick managing a cat in your house is not going to bother you, but it's going to send this guy through the roof. Yeah. But if you come along and say, well, I think everybody should have a little cat. It's, that's not fair to that guy. I don't think anybody should have a cat actually. <laughs> <laughs> not a pet guy. Well, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Bad example. Uh, wow. This is such a great topic. And I want to end on a encouraging note because this sounds so discouraging. Like how come we're not lamenting? Can you believe the fact that I have to have broccoli every day and the culture just shoves broccoli down my throat or that we all that we fast all the everybody. time and that we exercise too much. You know, these are not the problems of our culture. And then we, we come along and say, have less M&Ms and have more broccoli or whatever. It seems so 
I tried or like people hear us and, 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 you know, we hear this all the time for, for me and Jane, that patients would be embarrassed that they didn't live up to expectations or whatever. I mean, you and I, we've got our own battles and foibles and everybody's on the spectrum. Yeah. So, so now we're back to the positive affirming action side of this, that everybody out there does obey certain epigenetic rules all the time. Nobody forgets to wear their clothes. Nobody forgets to stop at a red light. Nobody, uh, because we set up such strong habits, such strong environments for those kind of things. Now to immediately pull out of an addiction to sugar or alcohol or something like that is, is one of the, it's the hardest thing in the world. Yeah, it is. So with wisdom and with love and with the people around you, and that's what we do as, as, as a doc, I don't just say, oh, well, the diagnosis is diabetes. You need to fast three days a week and stop sugar and blah, 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 blah. It's, oh my gosh, this is going to be so hard, but we will walk with you. I will call you once a week. We will have you come in. We will do these things. We'll set up a coach and a nutritionist and, a, and all of that. But people don't live in that environment with their marriage or their job, or if you had to drive down the pass or whatever. But if you know what's the next right best thing that you can change, then hopefully this conversation has helped people to think through that. I was going to say, ultimately, it's hopeful. It's like taking a bunch of kids and saying, hey, can we all be good basketball players? Let's, go, let's not go to the extreme and say NBA, but can we all be you know, on, the, on the high school basketball team? I'm going to take any group of 10 kids, boys or whatever, and say, it's po yeah. absolutely possible. Well, you could even guarantee, I guarantee you will be better than you were. Better than you were. But I could say, you know, you'd still say, even if, even if I'm only five foot tall, sure. It'd be better than you are. Spud Webb. How <laughs> tall was he? Five, five three, something. something in the NBA. I mean, you can't, but some of you are going to have to work harder. So we're, we tend to, because you just mentioned being, you know, if it can sound negative, it can. Well, like, Spud guess, Webb. Yeah. had to work hard oh my gosh sure. yeah so i can't eat this i got to do this i got to do whatever we can look at that negative but the over here we're saying yeah but you all have we all have the hope if i put it out there of being 65 years old and feeling good and looking good and having joy is that possible for everyone i think so some people are going to have to work harder at it and they're gonna yeah not be able to do this they're gonna have to you know need to do this over here but man the hope is that we can all be weller which is, Absolutely. is the point. And that should be hopeful. And hopefully you can find peace with the fact that you may have to work harder at X, Y, Z. I wish I could eat like you and have the digestion of that. I can't. And so be it. And there we go. <laughs>